Let's get started. Natalie Grant, welcome to the Whoa That's Good podcast. Yay, thank you for having me. I am so excited that you're on the podcast um, for many reasons. I mean, I've looked up to you from afar for a while. You're an incredible mom and wife and artist and worship leader. I even went to the belonging for a while. So I got to, you know, be in the worship room when you were That's leading. A special it was, place. Oh, so special. So special. So I'm thankful that you're on the podcast today. Um, so to get started, I'll get started the same way I do with everyone. What is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> really big that question. Is- Right. That's such a huge question because you could think it's so easy to just lay out because I think that certain pieces of advice you're given just strike you in the season you're in. Yep. So one overarching piece (laughs) of advice. Oh, probably in the season of life. Even, oh my gosh, Sadie, it's, it's too so hard to pick hard. one thing. I know. So I'm going to give you two because I think one of them is going to be good for you in the season that you're in. I love it. And then the other is just an overarching piece of advice. And that is um, never have a plan B. Mm. Um, I think that oftentimes, even as parents, and you're about to experience this, is that you want to have a plan B to have a backup in case mm. plan A doesn't work out. Yeah. And I think that um, as you think about what you want to do with your life and you're moving forward, all of us have like this goal of whatever our dream is that we want to accomplish. Right. Um, But I think that you have to not look at a dream or a destination as plan A. Mm. You just have to look at living for Christ as plan A. And however that works itself out is plan A. If you have plan B of, well, I think maybe I'm going to do this as the safe route. Right. Plan B will always keep you from plan A. Oh, that's and, good. And um, it, that'll challenge you as a parent because you want to protect your kids and go, well, do this as a backup plan. Like if this is what you want to do for plan A and you want to be a speaker or an author. But just in case that doesn't work out, get your teaching certificate so you can have a plan B. But then the problem is you're only ever going to do plan B. That's true. And never do plan A. So that was my number one piece of advice. Oh, that's good. Then my number two piece of advice came from my dad. And he said, as a parent, um, never grieve the season that you're leaving. So Mm -hmm. like for me, when I was looking at my little baby and we were moving to, oh my gosh, now they're talking, I would cry and be like, (laughs) but I still want to like have them in that little squishy stage. And then when they were the toddler stage and they started school, I was like, (laughs) but I still want to keep them in that little toddler stage. And he said, don't ever grieve the stage you're leaving because every stage is taking you closer to the greatest stage, which is now my kids are my best friends. Oh, that's awesome. And And I think that that applies to life. Don't grieve the stage you're leaving because God's always taking you. Even if it's something that you don't want to leave and you can't see where you're going, Mm -hmm. God's always taking you when you're walking with him Mm -hmm. to the next beautiful stage. So don't grieve the one you've left. That's so good. (laughs) Two, and they were bombs. That was awesome. I I love that advice. Uh, And especially going into parenting, I think that would be good for Christian and I both because it's funny when Christian and I go on trips together and we travel a lot, you know, we were just talking about that before the podcast started. And it's funny, like every time we get back from a trip, Christian will be really quiet and I'm like, are you okay? And he's like, I'm just sad that we're not there anymore. Like he, he like <laughs> loves to travel. He loves totally. the experience. Um, but yeah, that goes with life. It's like, yeah, but where we're going is, is even, is going to just yes. keep getting sweeter. It's going to keep getting better. God yes. has something in each <laughs> space. So I love that. That's For so sure. good. Well, I love how close your family is. And recently y'all been doing the song a day keeps the crazy away, yeah. which I love following along. I wanted to ask you, cause I know a lot of people follow that. How has, that kept your family close during a really crazy past year? Well, it's funny because, you know, for people that don't know my husband, uh, Bernie Herms is a songwriter and a producer. And when we first started, we've been married for 21 years and I got my record deal and my husband in the same year. That's awesome. (laughs) And so when we first started in 1999, um, the thing is, is that we did it just he and I. And then as life got busy and he got busy and 
so many incredible opportunities to work with so many other people. And um, he didn't tour with me anymore. So we have this wonderful grand piano, but he's usually down in the studio working on equipment and yeah. he walks by that piano every day. So to be honest with you, when, when COVID, like that whole season first started last March, we were like, well, everything has stopped. What can we do? Well, let's just do a song, you know, like, mm -hmm. let's just do a song. And we didn't have any kind of fancy light or camera or microphone. It was just our iPhone and our piano. And there was something about the simplicity of it yeah. that stripped everything else away that's complicated right. our season sometimes and just kind of took us back to where we started. And there was something awesome. so beautiful about the simplicity of it. But then it was involving our kids in yeah. it and they started singing with us and they started sitting on the, you know, upstairs where people couldn't see it in the frame, but they were just watching every song That's we were so filming. Cute. And there was just something about it that made it this whole family thing that became our daily thing. So the fact that it was ministering to other people was a beautiful gift to us. Yeah. But honestly, it was ministering to us. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> so the awesome. gift really was just to us. And and the only thing that, the only rule we had was that we couldn't talk <laughs> on it. So I don't know if you noticed on the that's songs, we so never were like, hey guys. Because every so time I true. turned on my Instagram, someone was saying, Hey, hey guys. guys, and I just didn't want to hear hey guys anymore. It's true. I have to like challenge myself, like do not start with hey guys, but it's so hard know, every time. I do the same thing. It's so hard. It's like a trigger. As soon as you press record, it's like, hey guys, you're like, why? It's hey not guys, even me. How are you? <laughs> totally. Well, y'all crush it. I love that. And I, I'm sure that's so amazing for your daughters to just see their parents do something mm -hmm. together. I love when my parents do anything together, whether it's playing tennis totally. or fishing in our pond or making dinner, like. <laughs> Like, it's just sweet to see your parents be friends. And so the togetherness. Is yes, the best. <laughs> that's amazing. And it's fun for everybody on social media to see. And it's cool that it's a blessing both ways. That's when you know it's a God thing. Um, totally. Well, I recently got to be with you in California. And it was so funny because I brought up the fact that we're doing the powerful workshop together on the Ello wow. Sister app. And also yours goes live <laughs> this week. So I'm so excited <laughs> that we're going to be talking about that on the podcast and it's going to go live. But you said something to me that that was so funny. You were like, you said it made you so nervous to do the video. And I was like, <laughs> you like you're Natalie Grant like you're, you're you do this all the time and you're like well singing is my comfort zone speaking totally. is not which I get because if somebody asked me to sing I would be so nervous <laughs> but this doesn't make me totally. as nervous so I wanted to ask you because I don't think people probably think you would get nervous how do you press past fear and certain things to say yes to what God's calling you to do because it's really easy to say yes to the things that you're yeah. confident in it's really hard to say yes to the things that you know you're yeah. like this is not necessarily my thing but I know it's something that God will use you know it's funny because even just yesterday somebody was asking me if I still get nervous when I sing and I said I totally do like yeah. I totally still get nervous even though that's my comfort zone and they said how do you get past the nerves and all of that and to be honest with you <clears throat> I used to like struggle with the nerve part of and, and that used to become such a crutch like yeah <gasps> my nerves, my nerves, my nerves, my nerves, because I was focusing on the nerves instead of leaning into the nerves. And That's good. I'll explain what I mean by that. I lean into it. When I'm nervous, I like lean into the nerves instead of trying to like make them go away or coming up with the five steps of what yep. you can do to like yes. get to the nerves because I feel like leaning into your nerves actually is a constant reminder mm -hmm. that we're not built to do anything in our own strength. That's good. And so if I try to come up with a process of how I get over my nerves, I think sometimes I'm relying on my gift. Mm -hmm. I'm relying on my confidence instead yep. of my God confidence. That's good. So yeah, there's some practical things to do, which for me always comes back to the word. Mm. So I always go to my emergency chapter, which is <laughs> and like I say, if you've got an emergency, you dial 911. Yep. And for me, I look up 911, which starts at Psalm 911. That's Psalm good. 91. So... That's my emergency chapter, 911. And you read the whole chapter because it that's reminds awesome. you that he doesn't let anything come near you that's going to harm you, that yes. he's hiding you in the shelter yes. of his wings. And I think that gives you a confidence when you know you're surrounded literally yes. by the wings of God. Like you think of like a little bird and them coming into the wings of their like yes. mama or their daddy. And it just, 
that gives me a comfort. But the nerves are not something I think that we should try to necessarily get rid of yes. in the sense that you're like, okay, that's right. Actually, I can't do this in and of myself, mm-hmm. but when I'm weak, he's strong and I can do mm-hmm. all things through Christ who gives me strength. And then you just have to go for it. And I yeah. think the more that you go, I'm nervous, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yes. Um, that just doing it. Um, I think It doesn't make it go away. It just makes it easier with every single time that you go, I'm just going to do it. And I think that honestly, it comes down to that, right? It's like, I'm just going to do it. I'm scared to death, but I'm just going to do it. Yes. And that just going to do it thing kind of starts to get you through. (laughs) Fam, I got something special for you. I've talked about it before, but I'm going to say it again. It is the magic Spoon. It is literally going to bring you back to childhood because I don't know about you, but cereal just tastes like childhood. But this is even better because it's for your adult life because it's actually super nutritious. It's good for you. It doesn't have all the sugar, but it tastes just like the cereal that you used to love. You could literally mix their cocoa and their peanut butter, make a little peanut butter cocoa puffs, whatever whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do, you can make your dreams come true with Magic Spoon. They have zero grams of sugar. 13 to 14 grams of protein and only 4 net grams of carbs in each serving. Only 140 calories a serving. And it's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. But guess what? It is not goodness-free. It is very, 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 very good. And I'm super excited because last time I talked about it, my favorite flavor, blueberry, was out of stock. But blueberry is back, baby. It's so good. It's like fruity. It's delicious. Y'all are going to love it. I can't wait for you to go get Magic Spoon. You can even make a custom bundle of flavors with cocoa fruity frosted peanut butter and cinnamon so go make your choice go to magicspoon.com slash woe to grab some blueberry or a custom bundle of cereal to try it today and be sure you use my promo code woe that's w-h-o-a woe at checkout to save five dollars off your order this offer is now good in the u.s or canada but only when you use my code at checkout woe and magic spoon is so confident that you'll like their product it's backed with a hundred percent happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for some reason they'll refund your money back with no questions asked y'all that's incredible remember get the next delicious bowl of cereal that you're gonna eat at magicspoon.com slash woe and use the code woe to save five dollars off i love that (laughs) and you know like I feel the same way and I always know God will meet me when I'm there it's just normally the nerves right before it's crazy because people ask me that too and I still get nervous every single time like it doesn't matter if I'm speaking in front of at passion or if I'm speaking in front of 12 people at my church like I'm gonna be nervous the same way but I talk about it like skydiving so I don't know if you've been skydiving but when you go you you literally get the edge (laughs) of the plane (laughs) listen I don't even know how I did it but you get the edge of the plane (laughs) and you're so nervous but (laughs) <laughs> Literally, you just lean into it and you fall yes. and it's a Got little out of control for a second, but then you get caught by the parachute and it's like the wind just catches you. And I feel like that's the same Love thing it. with God. Like sometimes you just have to lean in. I think people think that because they're afraid, it's a reason to not do it. It's like, no, everybody's right. afraid. Like God, totally. God, there's a reason he says, do not fear. But then he always says, because I, but I will be with you. Like do it yes. and he'll catch you. And then that, that's when yeah. you'll see like, I don't and have I think to be. too, like just even realizing we're always looking because even when we're afraid right the the root of that is that we want to be comfortable we want to be comfort like comfortable yes and i think just realizing that god calls us to a life of faith not because he's cruel or wants to like but because he actually values us saying I'm not comfortable, but he values our yes in the midst of our uncomfort. Mm. That's actually when I think we experience him the most. If we're constantly comfortable, then we don't have the same experience of him because we don't need him the same. And we don't recognize that we need him. But the reason he calls us to this blind faith is because we experience him more. We actually experience that comfort of him, the need of him, Mm -hmm. the understanding of how he shows up 
every time that we're weak, that's what the blind faith does. Yeah. And that requires us just to kind of step off the edge, you know? That's so good. Yes. I love that, man. That's going to help so <laughs> many people. Well, I want to mm-hmm. talk about the workshop because your workshop is co- going live this week in the Powerful Workshop. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what that is, that is a workshop we're doing in the Elo Sister app on body image. Uh, we're talking about eating disorders, body image, basically anything you've gone through that maybe you believed a lie about the way that you were made that made you less powerful than the way that God made you. So it's been so good. Um, but you're, I got to watch your stuff before everybody else did, obviously. And I mean, I literally, this morning I came into the office and I was talking about your video and I, I had chills just sharing it because I related to it so much. And I just felt like when you were sharing your story, I'm like, man, I can remember the moment that happened to me and the moment that I felt like that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like so many girls are going to relate. So do you mind just sharing for you, like when your eating disorder started and kind of maybe some of the trigger things that started it? Because when you shared yeah. that in the study, I was like, that is exactly what happened to me. And I feel like if yeah. I heard somebody else share their story when I was going through that, I would have felt so seen and like a lot of hope that man okay I, I'm here right now but I see this picture of where I where I can be and where I want to go in freedom so I would love for yeah. you to just share that totally you know it's, um for me it started in my second year of university and I can't say that I can blame it all on a bad relationship but <laughs> I was in a bad relationship with a boy that like I don't know if you'll identify with this part of it but You know, you can be like dating somebody, you know, you shouldn't be dating, but then there's like the boy that you see from afar that you're like, if that guy actually like notices me, that is kind of the, the dream of what I had written down. Like he looks the way I thought he would look and he's talking the way I thought he would talk. And just all of the things that the outward packaging was Mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, like this is the dream. Yeah. And I think that that's kind of how it started for me. Um, but I can't say that it was all his fault. I think there was an underlying control insecurity issue that just manifested itself Mm -hmm. because I allowed him to become the voice I listened to the loudest. Yeah. And, um, it's funny because, um, he knew a lot about the word of God and it was one of the first times I, I understood that just because somebody has head knowledge it does not mean that it's transferred to their heart. And so when I'm saying this, I kind of feel bad because I don't want to be throwing this person under the bus, even though I'm not even saying his name. And it was like 20 something years ago. (laughs) And I'm still like, yeah, I kind of want to throw him under the bus, but then I'm going to stop myself. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But at the same time, I'm like, no, Lord, that's not the godly thing to do. But it was manipulative. You know what I'm saying? Like that manipulative, when you use the word of God in a really manipulative way, it's so dangerous. Um, and I should have known better, mm. but I cared more about what he thought of me. And we were walking through a grocery store. Literally, we went in to get a pack of gum. And I just remember him literally were standing there in line because there was no self-checkout at that time. Mm-hmm. And he looked at this magazine and I, I actually don't even remember the person that was on the cover. I just remember what he said to me, which was, you know, if you would just like do this to yourself, you would almost be as beautiful as her. Yeah. And we left there and we went to go get something for lunch. And that was the first time during lunch, I excused myself and said, I needed to go to the bathroom Mm. and I made myself throw up. Mm. And it was not something that I was premeditated. Mm. It wasn't something like I was like, if I do this, it's going to make me, it was just, I think I felt so out of control. Mm -hmm. In my life, there was something about the release of what was in me coming out Mm -hmm. that I, I, it's hard. It's a weird thing to explain to somebody that's never been bulimic. It felt like a high a little Mm. bit. Um, And so, oh my gosh, it's going to make me cry because it kind of takes you back to that raw moment Mm -hmm. um, of that high you felt from it that was so twisted because it made you feel good in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you felt like you had this thing that you were controlling. And I feel like even somebody who's going to be watching this, you feel so out of control in your own life right now that you actually have deceived yourself 
into believing that what you're doing is your ability to control something. Mm -hmm. You have no idea right now that it's actually controlling you. Mm. And it takes a minute before you get to that spot, right? Where you're like, wait a second. That's the way the enemy works. He makes you think that you're in control Mm. when actually it's this thing that's controlling you. And it started in that restaurant and continued for probably about a year and a half Mm. um, of, yeah, I got skinny. Yeah. People started to notice. And then it became like this praise, which then keeps you in this cycle of this bad behavior because you're getting a good response. Yep. And then the bad behavior and the good response goes to like a concerned response. And it's so funny how that works, Sadie, because then the concern, you don't even realize it, that you're getting some sort of satisfaction from Mm -hmm. that. Like this concern, this like really weird concern is all of a sudden becoming like this, you know, thing that um, you, you, you crave. All right, fam, you've made it, but now it's time to post it on your website and share it to Instagram and send it to your contacts. But if posting your creation everywhere includes reformatting, resizing, re-downloading, and re-uploading, you need Issue. That's I-S-S-U-U, Issue. Issue is an all-in-one platform to create and distribute beautiful digital publications like brochures, magazines, flip books, and marketing materials. With Issue, you only have to make it once and you can distribute it everywhere without reformatting, which actually really does save a lot of time. For those of you who know, you know. Your content is already optimized for engagement and ready to share with Issue. My friend, actually Court, she's on my team, she messed around with Issue and it actually does save a lot of time. She was able to make animated gifts, website graphics, Instagram stories, and even add clickable links with your images. So go get issue today for free. That's right, for free. Or sign up for a premium account and you'll get 50% off when you go to issue.com slash podcast and use the promo code WOW. That's issue, I-S-S-U-U dot com slash podcast and use promo code WOW for your free account or 50% off your premium account. That's issue.com slash podcast with promo code WO, promo code W-H-O-A, WO. I wish I could say to you that I got to this spot where it was just like the Lord in this moment just healed me. (laughs) It was Mm -hmm. like I was just delivered from it. I wasn't. Um, Obviously, it was a long road of a bad relationship. I ended up actually getting engaged to this person. And so we were engaged to be married. And I thank God that I figured it out on the right side of the altar. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Because I oftentimes look back and think, oh my goodness, if I wouldn't have listened to that still small voice, Mm. um, where would I be right now? I think I'd probably be divorced and be in the middle of heartbreak. But I guess what I want to say to somebody who's listening is that you you can think that this is playing out in the way that you dreamed. And if you're a people pleaser like me and you don't want to disappoint someone that you've said yes to, it is not too late to say no. And it might feel in the moment like everything around you is going to literally crumble because Mm -hmm. I felt like that. If I come clean about what I'm doing, it's going to crumble. If I say no and break off my engagement, I'm going to disappoint so many people Mm -hmm. and it's going to crumble. And the dream I had for my life is going to crumble and everything is going to crumble. Yet I started with just that one decision. Okay, I'm going to break off my engagement. And then, okay, I'm going to take a path towards healing. And I remember this one time that I was in the basement of my parents' house. I was literally bent over the toilet. Hmm. I've never heard God speak audibly. I wish that I would hear like the big voice (laughs) from on high, but I recognize that still small voice. And I just heard that simple, my grace is sufficient. Wow. My grace is sufficient. And I just, I remember in that moment going, okay, I don't know how I'm going to walk that out, but I'm going to start. I'm going to start just, and I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up and I'm going to stop right in that moment. I'm just going to get up. 
And I don't know if I'm going to have the strength to not do it the next time, but this time I'm just going to say no. And it was that small baby steps of saying no and then going to my parents and confessing that I had a problem and then allowing them to take me somewhere to get me help. Mm -hmm. And it was not just this one thing. It was little baby steps. And yeah, two years later, I fell back into it. But then I was in a different spot and mm -hmm. I was more equipped to go immediately ask for help, immediately yeah. go back and that's get some good. treatment immediately. And I think that's the thing. So that now here I am 20 some years later. And do I still struggle with insecurity? Yes. Do I still struggle with control issues? I do. But I'm equipped with the word of God and an That's understanding good. of the power of the Holy Spirit in my life that now I can take captive every thought mm -hmm. in the moment. In the moment it happens, you go instantly, Lord, what is it I need to do to take captive that thought? So I think it's important for people to know. And I realize I've been talking for a long time. I'm sorry. But no, don't I, it's, apologize. It's do not apologize. For people to know that. If you're looking to get to the place where you never struggle, yeah. that will keep you bound. Yeah. Because it's not a perfect life. Mm -mm. It's a redeemed life. That's so that good. you realize, okay, in this moment right now, I'm not going to try to go, I want to have victory tomorrow. Yeah. I want to have victory now in yes. this moment. And so in this hour, I'm mm -hmm. going to take captive that thought and God is not a genie. So he doesn't like, if you get on the nice list, then he's going to do everything for you. Yeah. You don't have to do anything for your own salvation. That's mm -hmm. not works. But walking out your salvation, it does require us to believe God, to take him at his word. Yes. So when he says to take every thought captive, he doesn't do that for you. He actually says that you can do that. That comes through knowing his word, being a student of his word, getting in his word, letting that word light your path in that moment and then go, okay, so for this moment, I, I have the victory. Mm -hmm. And then the next moment it comes up, you do the same thing. Yep, that's so good. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. You just put so much language to things that I don't even think I've put language for, for myself mm -hmm. and my story. <laughs> and it made me emotional too when you were sharing because I have such a similar start and it'll make me cry whenever I talk about it too. But I remember <laughs> like I was in a bad relationship and we were on the beach and he looked at some girl and he looked at me and he said, you know, I'm glad that you don't look like that because I don't have to worry about guys thinking you're attractive and lusting after you. And it was so manipulative <laughs> and yes, because it he framed it and I'm glad but then it's like that you're unattractive. And so I don't right, have th to worry. That's what that says to you. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so when I look at her and then I look at me and I notice all the differences that we have and it pushed me into this really unhealthy place and unhealthy state. And it was the same for me. My life was a little out of control at the time. And I felt like this was something I could control. And it more yeah. led in a way of way overworking out and not eating nearly enough and obsessing over how many calories and what it would look, just the whole thing. And my mind was just completely spun by that and it lasted for I don't know probably a year as well and we were still dating and I remember saying you know I think I have a problem like I think I'm like have a problem with eating and I don't know why he's the person I went to but besides he just became my person and like you said his voice was louder than any others and he said oh yeah I've noticed that and it was like as if that's not a bad thing like at least you look good kind of thing and um, you're right. It was like at the time people were praising it and it was like, you look amazing. Oh my gosh, you're so fit and all this stuff. But meanwhile, not knowing like where the root of it was coming from was so unhealthy. Totally. And so you, you know, kind of lean into that and you're like, okay, well, I mean, I look good or this and, and you don't realize that this is controlling you in such a heavy way and really stealing from your life. And who you yes. are and so um when you were sharing that that's why I was like oh my gosh like this is like so my story and it was the same for me where it was like one day I had a moment with the Lord where I just like repented and kind of confessed 
to God and was like, I know I'm like not healthy. And I began to just read scripture over myself. But then it was a daily decision. It was like, yes, there was freedom in that moment. But it was like every time I went to eat with my family, I'd tell myself, like, eat the meal, like eat the meal. (laughs) Don't think about it. Just eat it. Like it's healthy for my body. I started thanking God. I started being like, I'm so glad that this is going to make me a stronger person and that I'm going (laughs) to be able to mentally be free. Like sometimes gratitude, you just have to like work your way through it with the gratitude that you have for your body. And so I just thank you for sharing because I know that if we've both been through it, then so many girls have. And I love how you talk about, um, you talked about how you were kind of ignoring so many nudges from the Holy Spirit at the time about this relationship. Um, For girls who are, you know, in a relationship where they're like feeling so many nudges of like, this is not it. But again, like it looks good on paper or in their mind, they've already said, this is who I'm going to marry. What are some of those things that you feel like people can be on the lookout for to know, maybe this is not the relationship I'm actually supposed to be in? You know, I think the thing about Jesus is that when he's in it, you're going to have peace. Like like you're going to have peace. And it it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. And I actually think that what's really beautiful is that you and I, though years apart, we have a similar story, but we also have a similar victory. Yes. We got, we got the prize in a husband. Yes. We got, we, we did. And, and it wasn't because we're perfect or we did all of these things, right? Mm. All we did, however, was we listened to the nudge of the Holy spirit. Yeah. And I think that that's really important because I think that girls, especially not that boys don't, but girls especially fall for the lie that one, this is as good as it gets. Yep. That two, oh my goodness, what if nobody ever loves me again? So if I say no to this or yes. I walk away from it, what if I, there nothing else comes around for me again? So yes. I better take it while I can get it. And then... Um, I think that that is really important is when you feel that nudge, you have to trust that God has something for you. You have to take him at his word. I say this to my own girls all the time. We actually don't really want to take God at his word. That's the Mm -hmm. thing is we want to when it's easy, but when we can't control the outcome and girls, we're fix it girls by nature, women are nurturers and you think that you can just like help a person you can't you can't do that when it comes to your future in marriage you can't decide on the uh, oh so sorry so sorry my alarm (laughs) hey (laughs) that was my alarm that was actually my alarm sounding for every girl that's what i was gonna say that's what's happening that literally is the perfect timing. That was That's perfect. That's what's happening on the inside. That is, I was literally what I was going to say. That is what it sounds like on the inside of your soul and you know it yes. if you're in this position. That was amazing because it was accidental, but I feel like that is what is happening on the yes. inside is a yes. Yes. and you're like trying you're to like, choke it snooze, down snooze. and trying to quiet it. But there's alarms going off. And the thing is, is that right now, I also know, because I know this feeling that there's somebody watching and your heart is actually pounding Mm. because you know that Mm. we're talking to you right now. You know that it's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And guess what? It's going to hurt when you break it off. I'm not trying to tell you that when you break it off, all of a sudden, you're going to be like, Oh, hallelujah. I followed what the Lord told me to do and it feels so good. No, it's going to feel like crap, actually. (laughs) You're going to be broken hearted, but it's going to lead you Mm -hmm. to the right. It's going to lead you to a wide open field. I think I quoted this scripture. It's from the message version. It's Psalm. Oh my goodness. I can't even remember the address right now, but it's Psalm. um, Oh, Sadie, you may (laughs) remember it. But it's the message version, and I love it because I think it helps us take a deep breath. It says, but he caught me. Mm. He reached all the way from sky to sea. Mm. He pulled me out of that chaos, the void in which I was drowning. They hit me when I was down, but God stood by me. He stood me up on a wide open field. 
Mm. I stood there saved, surprised to be loved. God made my life complete when I Mm. placed all of my pieces before him. And I think that even though you walk through that like moment of heartbreak, he will put you in a wide open field where you will be able to breathe deep and you won't feel it overnight, but you'll get there. That's amazing. Sure. That's so good. Wow. Come on. I love it. I, I think that's so true because, you know, whenever you have to trust God in a moment, whether that's ending a relationship or stepping something, you know, you don't get to see the other side of that trust. And we read that in the Bible, like whenever God asked Noah to build an ark, like he didn't see like the rain yet. He just had to start building. Whenever God asked right. Joshua to totally. walk around seven times, like he didn't know the wall was going to fall, but he walked around it seven times totally. and claimed the victory. Like, and, and even David with Goliath, like he actually saw a giant, but he still stood before him with his slingshot in his hand. Yes. And so like, you're going to have to face this moment where you're going to have to trust God enough to end a relationship or whatever that looks like in your life. We're just talking about this right particular subject right now, but I didn't know Christian was coming, you know, but I trusted God in the moment to end it. And you mentioned something about how maybe you believe the lie that no one could love you that way. And honestly, maybe, you know, that hasn't just been a lie in your head. Maybe that person told you that because I remember um, that happened to me. And I was recently talking to a friend about that. And it happened to her, too, where um, I was, you know, my life had exploded already at the time when we were dating. And I was known by a lot of people. And that's a lot to deal with in its own way. And (laughs) there was other things. And I I had anxiety at the time because of all this stuff. And I remember him telling me, you know, you're so lucky, you know, because I can deal with all this and that nobody would ever be able to deal with it. So like basically this manipulation of like, no one would ever be able to love you the way that I have. No one would be able to put up with this the way that I have. I am taking on all of the, the, this hardship because for you, you know, you're welcome kind of thing. And I believe that. And I literally thought like, you're right. This is a lot. I would never like, Nobody could handle this. You're so awesome that you have carried this with me, you know? Yes. Wrong. Um, and so, wrong, like, wrong. wrong. And now, me, like, me, me. I know, that was the alarm <laughs> sounding. Like, hello, wake up, not right. But I believed him. And I, I think so many people, I've heard other girls say that they're, the guy they were dating said, no one could ever put up with you the way that I do. That That kind of thing. And so then you really are afraid. But that's not true. Like, now that I am married to the man, that I'm married to and he loves me so genuinely and I'm so confident in who I am and I have peace and I'm closer to the Lord than ever and closer to even who I am than ever because he affirms that in me. I, yeah. I didn't see that at the time when I was dating the other guy and had to break up with him and that that was crap. But now yes. I do and I'm <laughs> so thankful for that decision. So I love that. Uh, you quoted something for the workshop that I just wanted to bring up. You said, you don't need to speak your truth. You need to know and speak his truth. And I just yes. think that's absolutely beautiful. And as you've been talking, the truth of God flows out of you so effortlessly. And it's yeah. so obvious that you have just, <laughs> I mean, immersed yourself in the word and been like a tree planted by a stream of living water, <laughs> meditates on the word day and night. Like, And yes. so I just want to call that out in you and just say thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thank you for yeah. just spilling out truth and God's word over our life because that was the thing with this workshop. It's not powerful because we're powerful. It's powerful because he is a powerful God who created us. And so Natalie, you are amazing. I know you're an incredible mom to your girls and you've been a mom to all of us today. And so thank you (laughs) so, so much for sharing your story. That was so good. to all of us, Sadie. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much. Man, there's alarms going off. There's alarms going off. (laughs) So good. (laughs) Welcome to the podcast. How's y'all's day going? Good. How about you? So good. good. It's been a beautiful day today. It has been a beautiful day. So what was the question that you guys sent in? So I had sent in a question, um, and it was just tips on how to run a high school girls Bible study, but one that's student-led. Cool. So Lindsay and I run our own Bible study, um, so that's what the question was about. That's awesome. Well, that's so great that y'all run a Bible study. I have done Bible studies since I was like, 
gosh, in middle school, I think I put on a Bible study. High school, I did. I do now still. Uh, so I love Bible studies. I think they're awesome. I think it's a great way to form community um, and just study the Word together. So my piece of advice for that would just be, honestly, make it fun. Like, and I know that might not be the most spiritual advice, and Christian will get to the spiritual side, but make it enjoyable and something that people actually want to come mm-hmm. to, you know? Treat girls over the top, or if it's guys and girls, treat them over the top. Like, whether that's getting food, and I know maybe you, you're you in high school, you might not have the money to just, like, go buy a bunch of food, but even just, like, pancake mix, I know this is practical, but, like, it's pretty cheap, it's pretty easy to make pancakes, and everybody loves a pancake bar. Do pancakes and chocolate chips and blueberries and sprinkles, and, like, those are the kind of things that I think make people feel really loved and really invited and like something that they want to continue going to whenever you go above and beyond to love them in that way. And then the other thing is really just focus on the community aspect of the Bible study, like asking people, how can I pray for you? And then not just listening, but actually praying for them right there. And then the next week following up, hey, Julia, what I know you talked about this last week. Is that getting any better? Like, those things actually go a long way because I think that the heart of the Bible study beyond just studying the Bible is to have fellowship with one another. And so when you focus on those fellowship elements, like actually diving into what people are going through and feeding them and loving on them in that way, I think those are two things that make a Bible study really great. Yeah, that was really good. Well, I don't have much experience with leading a girl's high school Bible study. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But... Leading one, <laughs> leading one throughout college, I, I know for me, um, I don't want to use the word successful, but the way that made it the most um, impactful through my group of friends throughout college was always being prepared going into it. And there were some weeks that, you know, a message would kind of come the day of that we were going to talk about something, but it, it always seemed kind of limited. So I know for me, if we were going through a book like James, it would always be... Um, like days of preparation with, you know, looking up other resources and looking up other things that kind of that kind of go with the verses and really planning out questions that I was going to ask the people there and not really just kind of one-off questions, but more conversational questions. Mm-hmm. And I know for me, always being prepared for the night of Bible study really helped because there were some nights where, you know, kind of like what I said, like it would be the day of preparation and it just wouldn't be as... You know, as impactful as it was if I had that preparation. Preparation is definitely is definitely key too because you are the leader of the Bible study, so make sure that you lead it. You know, as the leader that comes with preparation and being intentional about what you're going to talk about. Um, I've talked to people who say, "Sadie, I wish my Bible study was." more vulnerable or I wish it would open up more or I wish they would engage more and I normally just ask well how are you leading it because if you lead from vulnerability and you engage and you open up that's what's going to allow other people to and so Mm -hmm. as the leader your preparation how you love people how you dive into people's lives that's what's going to set the tone for everybody in your group and so um, you're the leader lead Mm -hmm. it and I'm really I'm really excited for y'all's Bible study. I think it's probably already awesome, but I hope it only gets better. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was really good advice. Yes. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. You too.